to the Runner X podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Welcome back to the Runner X podcast. I'm your host, Coach Caroline. I'm here with Coach Valerie. Coach, we've been uh, watching a lot of the big races. Um, I just had a friend do Berlin. She got her sixth uh, part of the star, basically the big ones. You know, she's done Tokyo, Chicago, New York, I think London, Berlin, you know, the the big ones. So right. even Chicago. Congrats to my, her, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She actually, she's one of the, she's a natural pose runner. I've watched her run. I've watched, I've seen her screenshots and she has perfect pose. And it's crazy because if I talk to her about pose, of course, like most people, she'd think I was nuts. <laughs> but, but she's just, she has that ability to hold her line and she looks beautiful when she runs. But uh, what I found fascinating is that Chicago was my first marathon back um, almost 13 years ago now. And at that time, it was a big deal because I was turned 45 and there was 45,000 runners, right? Um, so, and I did do it through, I did raise money for it uh, just because I happened to be doing it um, for breast cancer was my, was my goal. But what's so crazy is now, I think it was a couple of years ago, didn't Chicago become a lottery? And aren't a lot of them having like not just time limitations where they ha you have to complete it in a certain amount of time. You're actually having to like Boston, you have to have a time in order to even get in for the lottery. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's the amount of people signing up for marathons is creating a shift in marathons to a and cre to create more barriers for getting in, because the reality is they can't. Like the London Marathon had over 800,000 people apply to get in. And it's like a 50,000 person race. I mean, it's just crazy, right? It's yeah, yeah. the number of runners. And so, again, running for charity is amazing. Um, running for time, you know, whatever people are running. But the marathon oh. is like the ultimate. Like that is, by the way, half marathons are picking up too. Like that is yeah, definitely yeah. a another pace. But not nothing like the marathon. There's just this like, I want to run a marathon feeling. Uh, <laughs> well, isn't that? Yeah, but isn't what's happening? The, but, the original story of the marathon is the guy is running in. I can't remember if it's Rome, and he gets no, to Greece. the yeah, yeah, Greece, yeah. and he gets there and dies. <laughs> yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the horrible the story. story. <laughs> well, right, but I think just the community in general has also built. Like, there's so many training. Uh, there's so many training groups for the marathon. It's a really nice uh, bucket list thing for people. I turn forty, right? There's a lot of reasons to run the marathon. Uh, I think the interesting part, so for example, my first marathon was in the year, was 25 years ago. And when I ran my first marathon, I'd never even heard of running marathons. Like I thought that was just for like Olympic people, like, you know, like race. Right. Like, like I thought elite, the rest of us, yeah, paid like runners. the rest of us <laughs> just ran 5Ks and 10Ks. Um, that doesn't mean there wasn't marathons. It just wasn't part of my thought process. Thought process, so, Right. The, and the first time I ran one, I remember even the announcer saying, you guys are nuts. <laughs> it was, you know, like, like at the beginning of the race, because they had a 5K, 10K. They still do this. It's the Caltown, and it goes all the way up to 50K. So he was just like, you guys are crazy people. And, you know, you finished, and you got a cowboy boot and a bowl of chili if you wanted, since it was Texas. <laughs> But at the time when I would tell people, they'd be like, well, what is that? And I'm like, well, you run for 26.2 miles. And they'd all be like, why? <laughs> why are you doing that? And, and I, by the way, I was hooked from the start. It's just that feeling of that crossing that finish line. And of course, you get to know yourself. You know, there's so much to the marathon. But what's happened in the marathon, and that's where we get to, like the woman uh, just broke Mar Chicago Marathon. We saw first Kevin Kipton last year. Uh, hit 200. He didn't break 200, but he got 200. Then this year, the guy got 202, and no one's even blinking. They're like, well, wow. he didn't get 200. We're like, <laughs> 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 and then the woman broke, she got 209. And you guys, that's like incredible. So Paula Radcliffe had the first 214, that was years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's been where it's held. And we've seen like 211, I think Safan Hassan got. So we've seen these numbers dropping, right? And it's insane. Like to see this much drop this quick. 
and we're thinking, oh my gosh, like I, most people I know are really trying hard to get to a four hour or break a four hour, right? right. right. Much less hit two hours in their marathon. There's a lot of people out there like breaking a three hour marathon is, is huge, right? Yeah. So yeah. we're seeing now these numbers. So anyway, what's the, why, why, is, why are these fast people getting so much faster? Well, you know, let's pretend we're not talking about doping. The super yeah. shoe has, the super shoe has been the biggest change. And so we're seeing the like Boston Marathon times now. They're way faster than they used to be. They, they just changed the time, just dropped the times again. For all the age groups, by the way, not just the young people. And what's happening is we're seeing, because when that super shoe came out, the only people that were feeling the benefits of the super shoe were people that were already running fast, which means their technique was already efficient. You see, so yeah. you've already got good technique. So then the shoe will enhance your already good technique because you already, like your friend, you're like, she's yeah. already a natural pose runner. So right. if she puts on a super shoe, she's going to run even better because she's already yeah. running well. Well, if someone that's an inefficient runner puts on a super shoe, absolutely nothing happens. In fact, a lot of the people that are running um, middle to the back of the pack, when they put on the super shoes, they actually feel uncomfortable because there's no top support. So a lot of people don't like that and they want just foam in their shoe. They like that foam, you know, that cushiony feeling because they're mm -hmm. on the ground longer, right? Longer you're right. on the ground, the less you want to feel it. I mean, you know? yeah, yeah. Right. So what we've seen is this increase in speed in the front, because now guys, we're seeing people that have been training in super shoes for five years plus. When they first came out, it was extremely exciting. Now we're seeing this is culmination of like this woman, she's not old, she's probably early twenties and she started on a track. She's a track runner and then built up her pacing. Well, she's only trained in these shoes. So she's yeah. had an advantage, right, since the beginning of her training. She didn't just get to start wearing them after not wearing them. So I think that's a huge part of it. So it's making more efficient runners more efficient. And then, so, unfortunately, the more inefficient runners are just getting more cushion, which encourages more time on the ground. So I feel like they're on the other end kind of getting slower. Yeah, like you said, they're kind of getting speeded out. So you're getting this this huge push at the front of the pack. But the middle to the pack, back of pack runners that aren't really getting any kind of a benefit from the super shoe are just staying where they are. And so they're getting basically yeah. left behind. Pretty soon you're going to have, a, you know, oh, the Chicago Marathon for those that are super shoes. And then you're going to have the Chicago, <laughs> you're going to have another 45,000, you know, doing their own. Because they're going to eventually, like, if you have that many runners and they're that far apart, I, I really see like a secondary, like, uh, the second city running or something like that, you know, like, well, I mean, and you know what I've always said, by the way, because this is a big thing guys. And, and I know Caroline and I are a perfect example. Like I, when I first started running marathons, I never thought about racing a marathon. I just thought right. about finishing. Like I right. was just like, I'm going to run 26.2 miles. I'm getting to the finish. Line. And I did, you know, yeah. um, and then when I started getting into technique, I was like, okay, I want to race a marathon. I don't want to just finish it. I want to like race it, like, you know, train right. for it, prepare for it, follow a plan. I have a goal. I want to, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's a completely different experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I've done both and I, and I, you just, like, I'm, you know, everyone's like, you need to celebrate just that people are running. I do. I, and a hundred percent, I work with the middle to the back of the pack. That's, those are my people. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. So I don't feel, I don't feel in any way other than why not help people get more efficient, no matter where you are. Don't you want to move better? It's not about running faster. And I said this to Caroline in the beginning, because I used to say to people, when you do learn how to be more efficient, you're going to spend less time on the ground. You're going to have less impact in your run. And you, a byproduct is speed. So you will get faster. But not because I'm telling you, go faster. <laughs> it's because you'll naturally develop speed if you work on the efficiency of your running. 
And that's a, ch- and, but by the way, guys, the guys in the front, that's all they do is work on their running efficiency. I mean, that's it. Like their right. training is, is all intervals and they do strength and they do skill work and they do all the mobility and self care. They do all that. And so we train people like they're elites. That's what I've always said. I train you like for the, be the best you can be. And I think when people start to put more, um, I don't know, emphasis or, uh, put yourself higher on the list. Like it's not just about getting the shoes and signing up, like invest in you and like becoming Mm -hmm. a better runner. Absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, if you have, or if you're, whether you're part of the middle of the pack or you're part of the front of the pack, um, whether you're injured or just wanting to um, basically improve your efficiency, make your movement uh, more fluid, we would love to have you in the membership. We would love to have you join us uh, talking about it through our podcast or through our Instagram or X feeds or YouTube channel. Find us on all of our social media channels. Reach out, ask a question. We're very involved in all of those. We would love to answer your questions. We'd love to take it on the podcast and take a look at it. And and really, how would we coach you through that? So if you're interested, go to support at runrx.fit and shoot us a note. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us on the RunRx podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runrx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runrx.fit.